When she started doing comedy, it didn't take long before Thea Vidal made a name for herself and began performing on the big stages in New York and Los Angeles. After memorable sets on Rodney Dangerfield's HBO special and Def Comedy Jam, Vidal became the first black woman to star in her own sitcom named after her. Having their own sitcom is what most comedians strive for, and Thea was one who accomplished that. Today we've got Thea Vidal calling in to clear everything up, discuss her career, her legacy, and so much more. Thea, I can't tell you how much of an honor and a pleasure it is to have you joining us today. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to sit with us and do this interview. Well, you are so very welcome. Thank you for asking me. So you were born in Washington and moved around a lot, um, as some would call a uh, military brat. Um, and um, I yes. think you, you even lived in Japan for like three and a half years. And yes. eventually, when your father retired, he retired in Victoria, Texas, right? Yes. Now, that I, hell hole. <laughs> I've never been to Victoria, Texas, but I can imagine. And that. you don't want to go to Victoria. Right. What was it what was it like growing up there for you? Um, it, it certainly was culture shock because, you know, we had traveled. You know, when you're a military brat, you travel. So your perspective is broader. Your visions are broader. But when we got to Victoria, it, it wasn't no broad visions. I'm going to tell you that. I'll tell you. It was, it was, I knew I, I didn't want to live there the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Here I was, I kept on saying, I just, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in Victoria. And because Victoria, you was going to be stagnant. I wanted to be an actress. I've always wanted to be an actress because I was always silly. Right. That's what people don't get about me. I'm very, very silly. I and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to keep no day job the way I was then. <laughs> I knew I was not going to keep a day job. Can, do you remember, can you recall your, the first time it clicked that, you know, where Thea was just like, comedy, comedy is for me. Can you recall that night or that time? I was, um, you know, I, I guess they got acclimated to me because... <laughs> I got, I just was silly. I, I actually said shit to white people they probably never heard, you know? Because one time goes, when is it going to be ready? I said, it's going to be ready when it's ready. I said, but you know where you can get it just the way you want it? And he said, where? I said, at your house. <laughs> Why don't you go to your house? You're honest and blunt. With your drunk ass. And they just, you know what? I was myself and I was genuine. I was genuine, okay? I said, you ain't no need us fussing. It's just food. One time, one of the one of the, the regulars said to me, he said, we was thinking. <laughs> it was three of them. <laughs> one had red hair and blue eyes. One, the dude was, I can't think, I wish I could remember the name. I should have. Anyway, and the other lady, you know, she was older, and she said, we was thinking this thing, and I said, yes, what was you thinking? And they were saying, we was thinking that you don't belong here. Mm. And I said, are we, are we having this conversation? What do you mean? No, no, not that, not that. You're funny. You're funny. You shouldn't be here. Right. You should be making people laugh. They eventually took you to to a comedy, a comedy show, right? Club. How, and how was that? I went there, and I saw a guy get on stage, and he was talking, and the lights just came on. And uh, other comics go, "You gonna get up on stage?" I'm, oh, I'm, no, no, not today, no, I'm not today. But I kept on looking at it, and I kept looking at it, you know. And uh, I, it was an interesting night. I just was looking at it. And then um, it's funny because the next, the next week uh, I got up on stage. The light came on real quick. And it's funny because I didn't look at the audience. I looked at my three friends right. that took me there because I was terrified. 
And then I, after that, I couldn't give it up. How do you go from, you know, what, what did it take for you to go from performing in local comedy clubs to Thea having her being the first, and let me just make sure, the first African-American female comedian to have a sitcom named after her? On the national network, yes. on one of the big three. What was, you know, what did it take to get to that point? Because as mentioned earlier, that's a place that a lot of comedians dream of. And especially during that time, it was all, it was almost uncommon. It, it, it just, you know, it was rare that it happened. So what did it take to go from, you know, here to Thea having her own, her own sitcom? A lot of work, but a lot of Rodney Dangerfield. Mm -hmm. Rodney Dangerfield hadn't found me. It would have, I had a 10 year plan, but it happened in eight, I think eight or nine years. So, um, Rodney Dangerfield gave me my first uh, break, and then I got to be on his uh, pilot, Where's Rodney? And then I got, you know, I mean, it, it just kind of just kept rolling. It kept rolling. I went to Montreal Comedy Festival, and that's when things really started to get to rolling. And so, you know, I did Club Soda, and then I did the Nasty Show, because I'm nasty, obviously. Now, I know once, once you know, you got to the point, here it is, you've reached where most people dream of, um, and, you know, may not even think that they can reach. You have your own sitcom. I know something that you've, you've talked about. You wish you had a little bit more creative control when it came to Thea, because you wanted to, to push things that actually happen in our communities, right? I want to, yeah, I just, I would have liked to have more fun and I would have liked for, for, <laughs> you know, everything, I would have liked for things to maybe go a little smoother and certainly uh, more authentic. Mm. Okay, that's one. Uh, two, I knew I was in trouble when I talked to Bill Cosby. I knew. I knew. Why is that? Because he told me. He told me point blank. They don't know us. Mm -hmm. They know what they think we are. They don't know what we are, how we are. I had to explain to them, just because black people are poor doesn't mean they don't dress well. We did this, we did this scene where me and, and uh, Jerome were playing spades against these two women. Right. And everybody was laughing. Everybody was laughing. And the director should have been filming it. And he didn't. And it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Me and Jason Weaver, it was so funny. And I thought they filmed, they filmed it. And I found out that they didn't. Wow. Now that, that scene to me, that spade scene would have been a big moment, a big moment. And I just said, I can't believe you didn't film it. I was so outdone. Do you have any say so in the, the casting call or, or anything in preparation for Thea? I had, I had a little input and, and, and this, and this is what people don't understand. When you get the, when you get, getting a sitcom, when you first get a sitcom, you don't have control over it. You have to remember one thing. I'm black 24 seven. Okay. I just got this show. I want what my dream is and what they're out with their, what they want is two different things. So having said that, I, I did say, I think this, you know, this person would be better, you know, when, when we read, and I did, I did say, you know, who I thought would be good. So one of, one of those recurring cast members is um, who we know as, you know, singer, songwriter, and actress, Brandy. What was um, the initial interaction like with you, Brandy? And I know, I think Brandy, mom was her manager at the time. What was that, inter that first interaction? We seemed to be, uh, we get along, you know, at first, yeah. And then as, as time progressed, how what the um, what started to unfold? Because I know you've you've mentioned that you know there was some disrespect during that time. So 
just painting painting the picture for us, what what was that process like that led up to the point where you felt like there was a lot of disrespect? I'm going to say this, and Symphony, I want you to hear me, and I want everybody that's watching to hear me. Let me say this. You know, uh, Brandy is, uh, I know that I knew this was coming, so don't, don't think I didn't know. I knew it was coming, Symphony. Right. You know, because people, I've been quiet for 20 years. Why is that? Cause I don't give a. F I didn't get on verses. I didn't get on. Well, I just told you I have no social media skills. I don't care. I. You know what? It's so silly. Cause you know it's twenty years later, and you know what? Uh, there is more pressing things going on in the world than verses, Monica. And Brandy singing. That's what that's what sparked it, right? The uh, the verses. And I wanna I wanna read a few tweets um, based on that verses just to kind of get an understanding from you. From your Twitter account, it says I'm tired of people coming at me sideways about Brandy. I never said she wasn't talented. I do and will always fundamentally disagree with her and her mama's disrespect while we work together on my sitcom, and I stand by that shit. Your favorites can be wrong sometimes. Stop being selective about that. Just because you like a celebrity's work, we are all humans who do shit that needs to be checked for sometimes. What what was going through your mind, you know, as you were um, essentially releasing releasing that? Uh, uh, that's on the Twitter, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I don't have a Twitter account, but it, since you brought it up, once again, I go back to, I don't do social media like that. But I did say years ago, years ago, I said that, you know, and I've heard her retort. I heard her retort and, um, you know, I'm bitter and maybe I need love. All God's children need love. Mm -hmm. I haven't said nothing about her when times when I, I could have kicked her, but I didn't. Right. Because that's not who I am. I don't kick people when they down or when they're having troubles. In the last few years, I've gone through many things. Last year, I lost my son. Okay? Mm -hmm. I lost my youngest child. And I am grieving him because he left children behind Absolutely. that must be loved and cared for. So... When you think, when you look at the big picture, I don't have time to be worried about what the f she's doing. I could give two fucks and a damn. My son is not here. I don't have time for foolishness. And, I, and may I just say this? She has a broader platform. You know, you could... You could probably be going out there telling young black people and Latino people, because the young people listen to your music, and tell them to vote. If Brandy was watching right now, what is it that you would want to communicate to her, if anything? You know, you've done well for yourself. You have a child that graduated college. You're a success. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. God has blessed you abundantly. He gave you favor. I'm not your enemy. I am not your enemy. It was such a long time ago. Everybody makes mistakes. You made them. I've made them. Let go. Let it go. Because I have. Because, child, I got nine grandchildren. I ain't got time for all this bullshit. I ain't got time for it. Are we safe to say that there is no beef between you and Brandy? Are we safe to say that right now on the Comedy Hype News Show, it is squashed, there's no beef between Miss Thea Vidal and Brandy? I didn't think there was. I didn't know we was beefing. I didn't. I really didn't. One thing that 
I was wondering, and, and that was kind of on my mind, is when Queens of Comedy came out, I feel like you would be the perfect candidate for Queens of Comedy. Is there a reason or any backstory to why we didn't see you on Queens of Comedy? There, I think the reason why you didn't see me on the Queens of Comedy is because um, of politics. What do you mean? I, don't do, I, I think Stan Latham and them, they didn't, I don't know. I, I, always, I, I always felt like there was something awry. Because I thought I would be an obvious choice too. Right. <laughs> But not so much. No, it didn't happen. And that was that was Walter, right? I think it's if I think it was politics. I think it was some people didn't dig me. I'll be honest with you. And by some people, do you mean do you mean like the people behind the scenes that were kind of moving the strings, or um, the women that were a part of Queens of Comedy? Maybe a little of both. Who knows? Is there anything that gave you that that speculation that made you think that one of the women could have, you know, had some say so or or played in the politics? You know, I you know what I can speculate, but I'm not going to go there because they're not touring, and it's okay, it's okay because they're not touring. But you know what? There's so many other tours I could have done and have done. You know. Um, I can't dwell on what I didn't get. I can only dwell on where I'm going. Right. And I have to keep going. I have to keep going. So I don't, I, I can't focus on that foolishness because I, I don't, it's, it is what it is. Right. As we wrap up, I do want to ask for, for new comedians that are coming into the game, you know, um, especially women, we have Tiffany Haddish. Um, and so on. What is, what is something that you would advise them or you would want to tell them, um, you know, as they're coming into this industry? One, anything that comes too easy, watch it. Mm -hmm. Don't trust every, who did you trust from the beginning? Who were your friends from the jump? when y'all was sharing a happy meal, who are those friends? You keep those friends. Them John, these new Johnny come lately, mother you don't know them. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't know them. They don't love you. They don't give a damn about you. Let me be very, very, let me be very, very real with you. Sometimes the closest people to you that say they're your friends is the motherfuckers that want to be you. Mm. This business lends itself. It festers in betrayals. Mm -hmm. It festers in betrayals. Who can I step on to get to where I want to be? Be comfortable with yourself and do stay in your lane. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You do what you do. You just do what you do. Okay? You can't do everything and be over here and Willie Washington. Well, I guess I'll go to that party too. And I guess I'll go to this party too. You know what? All parties ain't good parties. Now, b before I let you head out though, I know you're the first of many as I mentioned, but I want to kind of add to that list of accolades. It may not be, you know, as far up there, but I want to add to that. So um, Comedy Hype just released our first card game, and I want you to be the first woman on the Comedy Hype news show to play this card game with me. I just want to test, test you out a little bit. So I know it's not, you know, as big as the, the first time accolades that you have, but that's another another one that you can add in the add in the batch. Okay, now what is this card game? So it's, it's can you see that there? Yes, I can see so it. So it's a comedy hype trivia card game. So it's all about the world that you live in, the comedy culture. Um, so I'm just going to ask you three questions from the from card the game. Lord. I don't know about no newfangled things. So name the movie. You gonna eat your cornbread? <laughs> Green Mile. <laughs> no. 
life. <laughs> yes, I was about to say, Nathia, that's a classic. Don't do it. To I know. Me. That's I know a I classic. About it. I, love, I love the Green Mile. Anyway, go ahead. All right, the next one is going to be another act out, um, and it's going to be name the movie. Now, I'm going I'm to do my best, but <clears throat> here it go. 50, 30, 37, 38. Do, 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 do. 45, 47. <laughs> Name the movie. <laughs> do, 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 do. All about the Benjamin. You are you over there cheating? I, what you over there doing? You cheating or you just you just that great? No, I'm just no, kidding. I, I I said all about the Benjamin. Don't ask me how I got the answer. Just deal with it. <laughs> all right, last last one, last one, Thea. Did you like Dr. Pimple Popper? But anyway, go ahead. Last one. What new job? And this is just a question. What new job did Craig's dad, Pops, and Friday want him to apply for after he got fired? Dog catcher. Yes, ma'am. You queen of comedy. I, I don't I don't know what else the, the queen of comedy. <laughs> well, okay. Well, Even you say so, boss. <laughs> no, no, I definitely I'm teasing. I'm no, teasing. I love it. I told you, I, I love that you are you no matter what setting you're in. I, you know, I tell you, be you, please. So I appreciate you taking the time to join me, not only to discuss your career, but to also play our comedy hype trivia card game. So thank you, Thea Vidal. It was definitely a pleasure learning more about you. We definitely wish you the best, and thank you so much for joining us. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Do you know the comedy culture? Play Comedy Hype, the game. Out now.